How's it going, everybody? This is Matt from Auditor Sense, and on this episode of Audit Trails, we're going to take a closer look at NIST 853 and how we break down a control for this specific security standard. Now, NIST 853 can be a pretty daunting document. I mean, we see here that there's 460 pages of information, guidance, and justification for the steps that we need to take to secure an information system. When NIST 853 was first introduced, there were somewhere around 300 controls, but now on revision 4, or the fourth iteration of this document, we're up to 965 total controls, which is a lot. But it actually goes beyond that, because when we start to consider steps and enhancements, the number of auditable items actually grows into the thousands. So the purpose of this video is going to be to look from a bird's eye view at NIST 853 and kind of take apart a uh, uh, control from top to bottom. So at the highest level, we have control families. Now there's 18 in total, and each one's gonna cover a different area of review. We see here that there's everything from access control to training for personnel, contingency planning, uh, maintenance of the information system, and you know everything in between here. And each family will have a number of controls that pertain to this specific area of review. Um, so I'm just on NIST's website right now, and they provide this a convenient little chart that has some information for each control. First and foremost, we have the control number. So we see we're in the access control family. So that's AC and then uh, an identifying number that you know increments as we go out, go throughout here. Um, next, we have a control title. And this provides a little bit more information about what the specific control pertains to. And then we have a priority and baseline allocation. So priority is hierarchical in nature, and we see that there's a P1 through P3 with this optional P0. And what prioritization does is it helps ensure that security controls, which other controls are dependent on, are implemented first. So for example, something here like AC7, unsuccessful login attempts, or monitoring for unsuccessful login attempts, that's a priority too, because we need to have access enforcement, a priority one, implemented for first. So it's kind of intuitive when you think about it. It's not necessarily saying that access enforcement is more important than monitoring unsuccessful login attempts. It's just saying that we need to implement this first. Next, we have a, a baseline categorization. So NIST 853 is specific to federal information systems. And federal information systems, depending on the information they process and the tasks they, that they do, will be classified as low, moderate, or high risk. So each of these baselines pertains to those types of categorizations. So something that's low risk will only have to comply with the following controls. Something that's moderate risk will have to, again, comply with these controls. And high risk will have to comply with these controls uh, and enhancements here. So from a workflow perspective, we kind of want to isolate our priority. So what's been implemented? What do we still have to implement? Obviously, start with P1. If you know there is a security program in place, maybe we're ready to move on to P2. Um, but whatever it is, again, isolate our priority, select the appropriate baseline depending on our risk for the information system and the information systems categorization, and then we want to start to implement controls. So we see here that certain controls and enhancements aren't selected for a base baseline. So for a low-risk information system, AC4 isn't something that we necessarily have to implement. Um, or we see here, you know, that uh, for a modern information system, we do have to implement AC4 and AC5, something that's not required for low. Also, we see that this prioritization zero doesn't have any baseline allocation. And that's because these are supplemental and, and use case based scenarios. So something like monitoring for previous login attempts isn't necessarily required, but it's an option that we can implement if we decide that that's pertinent or our risk assessment decides that that's something we need for our information system. So if we dive into a specific control here, again, we're going to get a little bit more information. So there's a lot of content to dig into here. Again, we're in AC2, so uh, access control is our family. We're in the second control for access control, which is account management. And we see this is a priority one uh, implementation. So we see this account management and we get a little bit more information about what this control pertains to when we take a look at the control description. 
So starting from the low baseline allocation, we see that this is all the content that we have to comply with. So again, this is where we start to see the depth of NIST 853. Yes, this is one specific control, but one specific control can have all these items that we want to audit or that we have to audit. So there's several criteria to, criteria to meet here. And, and as we go through, we see that these individual steps. So again, we have our family, we have our controls, and now we have steps to this specific control. Um, and we see that there's you know, criteria to meet. And even if we dig down a little bit deeper, we can see some of these steps have multiple items. So something like uh, step D here, we have uh, the organization must specify authorized users of the information system, one, specify group and role membership, two, access authorization, three, and other attributes for each account. So that's four items for this specific step, which is, again, a lot, and for each account, which is a lot. But now we have a little bit better understanding of, of kind of where we stand with this. Um, so as kind of a sidebar, NIST 853A uh, is a specific type or a specific uh, deviation from uh, NIST 853 that kind of breaks apart these controls a little bit more. And it might make a little bit more sense to look at it here um, and see. Again, we're just looking at uh, D, which for NIST 853, uh, and again, this is within the NIST 853 PDF, uh, but also, again, looks a little bit nicer easier to access potentially on, on this website. So instead of having one whole sentence here with a lot of items, 53A will actually break up each one of these and make it a little bit more easy to digest. But again, it's still a lot of information. So NIST, NIST uh, the organization, actually provides supplemental guidance for each control to kind of help you work through this information. Um, they also give you related controls. So Potentially, if, if you're not quite understanding what you need to meet or you want a little bit more information, you can select some of these related controls to get a better idea of, of what it actually is you have to assess. So, again, when we're looking at a low uh, uh, baseline allocation here, we only have to comply with, at least for this specific control, the base control, AC2. AC2 base control is everything that's in this control description everything that's in this part of uh, the PDF. But we can see here that moderate and high-risk systems have other things they have to comply with. And these little numbers in parentheses here are actually enhancements. So if we go down, we see that there's now even more controls that we can assess and more controls to audit. Um, again, as supplemental review for this specific control. Um, so these function in the same way as a base control, but just to provide additional criteria to review. And as we scroll through here, we can see that enhancements can also have extra steps. So there's really a lot of information that this one single control, this account management control covers. And this 853 as a whole is gonna function essentially in this way. We have our high level control families. We have our specific controls. And then we have criteria to meet for each control and potentially enhancements to meet as well. Now, NIST 853 isn't just a static document. It's living and breathing. So while right now revision 4 is the current most recent version, um, there is actually a draft for revision 5. Um, you know, and this is just going to cover minor adjustments that occur with uh, occur with the security control baseline. So this could be they might add controls, they might remove controls, um, they might change the sequencing priority codes that we looked at. So something that uh, was potentially uh, P1 might be moved to P2 or vice versa. Um, but these changes just reflect the ongoing, you know, analysis of threats to information systems and specifically federal information systems um, that, you know, as these different items are presented. So we're gonna, they're going to re-examine the initial assumptions they had and, and generate new security controls um, based off that. So again, this was NIST 853 at a very high level, um, and there's a lot more to dig into, but 
once you kind of understand the structure, it's a little bit easier to dig down and audit or perform an assessment uh, for NIST 853. So thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or contact us through the Auditor Sense website. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Audit Trails. Thank you. Have a great day.